Hi there, I'm Kelly and welcome to my channel Animal Instinct. It's Sunday the 13th of December 2020 and I'm back with another cross-stitching update. I think this is number 23. Um, got all the usual for you today, including a naughty kitten who's just jumped up on the table. Um, yep, got a bit of everything. So really looking forward to winding down to the end of the year. There's two weeks left at work and then um, can start to relax a little bit. I have poured myself a drink on this summer afternoon and it's a mulberry gin from Kangaroo Island. And I've just realized it's a really poor choice um, <laughs> when I'm stitching a <laughs> stitching video and there's a naughty kitten around. You to have to be very careful. But cheers. Let's just pop Naughty Kitten down. There you go. You cannot eat everything. Okay, so what have I got to start with? I've got some finishes. I have got, I actually FFO'd something this afternoon, which is pretty rare for me, but I had a go at doing a um, hoop finish and I followed Bonner's uh, The Twisted Stitches tutorial, sort of, with my own adjustments. Um, firstly, I think, I think last video I had shown, I can't remember if I'd finished it, but this is Beverly Street Shop on Etsy. Uh, COVID Christmas and there's three I think there are three patterns that I've done two of them so it's stitched on 16 count Ada it's icon by picture this plus in generally the called for um, colors with with a little bit of um, personalization I couldn't see the back stitching on the mask um, in the called for color so I changed it to a blue or oh, really weird lighting I am losing the white at the moment <clears throat> but that one's finished I also went and started and finished um, the Santa version and that's what I've just about fully finished into a little hoop today. Um, so there's the Santa, it's pretty cute. On the same fabric, 16 count Icon Ada, picture this plus. Just done a bit of a, um, a ribbon around the edge and, um, and backed up with some Christmas fabric. I just need something to hang out with. Uh, that is, that's very strange. I don't know what got into me. <laughs> I've also had two more starts and finishes since my last video. I bought Lindy Stitches, the Cats Love Christmas series, where there's three patterns. Just couldn't help myself. <laughs> um, I do not have a Christmas tree up this year and there's a, a good reason for it because I'm pretty sure um, Reggie in particular would be very... Uh, naughty. Now, I've, so I've stitched two of them and I've finished two of them. This is the first one. Accident three days was eight. Now it's back to zero after Reggie has knocked the Christmas tree over. This is on, it's 16 count Ada. I think it's, um, I think it's Glacier. Um, I'm still deciding how I want to actually fully finish it into a little pillow or a little sort of flat ornament style. I'm, I'm not quite sure yet. And then I did the other one, um, well, one of the other ones, Cats Love Christmas. Um, so I've styled this one as Reggie, this one as Jemima, even though she looks a bit odd. <laughs> I was watching, looking at her while I was stitching it. I think I... I got it as close as you can get to a tabby. I used a bit of a blend, uh, DMC, um, with some blends. Um, and then this one is an older cat that I used to have called Tiana. And I reckon that um, they would have been mates. Reggie and Tiana would have been mates. She was actually a Persian cat that was found in a council um, cat trap that usually traps feral cats. And she turned up one day and she had a lot of problems, but she was the coolest little cat. So yeah, still have to decide how I want to finish those off. Um, but that's me done for Christmas stitching, no more. <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I've had another little finish as well. So this is um, the Snowflower Diaries Joyful World series. Yep. Um, and I'm stitching one a month in, in, in its month um, with Deb Wilson. We started in, well, we start, the first block we did was the September one. So I've now done four. Yeah, four. This is my December. This is on 18 count Ada as well, on a bit of an Ada kick. And it's Vintage Country Mocha. <laughs> I was watching Andrea from Andrew's Cautionary Tales and she, she did try it and pronounce Mocha the way we say it after watching my last video, I think it was. It was very funny. I did actually question myself <laughs> after I filmed that because I hear Americans say vintage country mocha all the time. I was like, how do I say it? Definitely. I checked with friends. Mocha. It's, <laughs> it's mocha. You, you have a mocha. <laughs> um, now, I had done the other three of them so far. I had done on a different fabric. So just as an example, that's October. Um, these will all be displayed one at a time anyway, so it doesn't matter if they're slightly different. They'll all be finished the same way. Um, but this is Picture This Plus um, Heartland Ada. And this is the... Oh, this is going to work. Oh, nope. <laughs> anyway, this one, the Vintage Country Mocha, is printed onto the fabric. And this is dyed. And even though they're both started out as 18 count, this one is actually um, smaller when I've actually measured them. So, but it'll be fine. So that now goes away until January. I'll put a link to the patterns down below. I'm gonna try and be good about that. <laughs> um, they're available for free on a blog. Okay, so now into my works in progress. This is a, a fairly <laughs> low, I'm planning to do minimal editing, minimal preparation for today's video. <laughs> so there has been no ironing. But anyway, we're nearly to the end of the temperature tree for 2020. Stitching it on. 32 count linen. And there we are. So we're into December, the last branch. And again, it hasn't been as yellow and orange as I expected it to be. You can see we had one hot day here. I think that might have been the last day that I filmed actually when it was 40. Um, but yeah, only a few weeks left on this to go. If you see me looking just here, it's because there's a cat sitting amongst everything. He's being quite patient right now, but he's bound to do something silly. So just bear with me. Um, right, next is an exciting one. It's my big Firefly piece by Jenny, Jenny Parks Illustrations. Charted by Gecko Rouge, my epic piece that will last me forever. I have gone <laughs> nuts on this since I filmed. I think I'd already started working on it last time. And I've put 5,300 stitches in since you last saw it. So I've completely finished... His face. Isn't he cool? Look at him. <laughs> oh, amazing. I'm not saying amazing at my stitches. I'm saying amazing at the, at the artwork and the charting, by the way. <laughs> so 
Um, I couldn't bring myself to completely pull him out of the cue snap because it's hard work putting loading him in. But I'm now covered up that part and I've come down to his jacket and I'm working along there. And you can see some parked threads. I mentioned many times I am not a parker. <laughs> but I felt almost a bit... Um, burnt out after finishing, especially like in here. You can see the hair, it's just amazing. And in here, because um, normally I stitch cross country and I just sort of fill in stitches as I go here and there. And there ended up being lots and lots of little individual stitches and it was hard work to get that done. So what I've done is these squares are 20 by 20, so 400 stitches in a square. I'm working my way down in 20 square deep um, sections so that I won't have, I mean, if I look at his, that's 20, 40, 60. So it was, it was a huge area that I was trying to fill in. Um, but now I'm just going to be doing his jacket and I'm just going to be filling in um, stitches in a 20 um, deep area and just the, the width of his jacket. Um, and then when I get to the 20, um, I'm just parking so you can see those are parked. And then once I've finished all those, I'll come and work along this one. And I think that'll keep me sane. <laughs> we'll see. I'm putting him away now until next year. Um, probably work on him again on the 1st of January, I think. Um, but for now, he's going away. Reggie, you can't eat the project bag, mate. Come here. <laughs> Anything that dangles, which makes it very hard. Anyway, um, one last whip, and that is, it's a bit of a surprise out of the blue whip, but it is my Taj Mahal Chatelaine. Now I'm going to have a sip of this and put it very far away. I'm stitching this on 32 count Belfast linen, black. I haven't touched it hardly at all this year, which is such a shame because I love it. Um, if I've got a, an easily accessible photo from last time, I'll put it in. But basically, I just um, I had done this corner and sort of the bits up and around but I filled in all the stitches in this corner here. That hadn't been done yet. It looks really good on the black. It really shows off nicely. I don't find it too difficult to stitch on the black. Um, my eyes just sort of adjust as needed. And yeah, I, I'm definitely gonna work on this more um, in 2021 for sure. I think once I finish this area, um, this square then in here you start actually um, stitching the, the the building itself the Taj Mahal itself which would be really cool so, that was fun to pull out for a couple of days okay what's next all right, so I have had another new start. Um, if you've watched any of my videos during this year, you, <laughs> you will have seen that um, I've stitched on a number of the Be Well and Stitch, the gifted charts from designers um, that were all released back in March, April this year. And I don't even know how many I've finished, um, but I've got a little collection. And I will have a um, finished parade probably the, the week between Christmas and New Year. So I'll show you what I've got there then. Um, but I've just decided I've got so many of those patterns. I could just keep stitching them <laughs> forever and not get through them all. So I'm giving myself a deadline up the end of the year. And my little miniature quilt that I'm going to put together um, with all of those finishes, um, I need to finish them by the end of the year. So... I went through the list and sort of prioritized a few, I guess. And there's, I mean, there's still about six I'd love to do. So 
we'll, we'll see. But this is my challenge now, between now and the end of the year, is to um, finish a few more of these. So if I've got a photo that's I'm able to share, I'll put it in. But this one um, that I have started is Satsuma Street's contribution. It's one that quite a few people have stitched. I'm sure you've seen it. It's bright, colourful house. Um, it says, let's stay home. I'm doing this one on uh, 16 count Ada again. I've got a little um, stash of Ada that I'm sort of getting, using up, I guess. Um, this one is Bash, Bashful, sorry, Bashful by Picture This Plus. And I've just made a small start. Um, it's, a, it's slightly pink, the Ada. So that's probably the biggest of all the ones I've still got on my list. So we'll see, we'll see how we go. That's my little challenge get through as many as I can because now um, I finished my joyful world for the month my temperature tree doesn't take long at all to catch up so um, and I'm also going to be doing a lot of full coverage stitching in the new year um, so why not why not devote the rest the last few weeks to this I've also got I won't give any spoilers but I do have some black ada to do I think it's at least one of them on so it's going to be an interesting little final piece when i finally get there okay now i've got a little bit of hole um where do i start i received some fabric from jay's x stitch on etsy she does a beautiful job of dyeing um, fabrics, nice little card with a little um, pattern in there. And I got three pieces of 32 count even weave. They're all dyed with sort of natural, natural dyes. Um, they're not out of the plastic, so I won't take them out. But that is um, 32 count even weave. It's all 32 count even weave. Um, week T. And then this one is Lavender Ice. And then the last one is Lemon Butter. And she also, I think she only had these for the the weekend of the Mittagong retreat that I, I talked about last time. Um, but she has these little, um, she's called the mini projects, um, but they're little bags of almost like scraps or off cuts and it's a mix of things. She sold them at the, um, at the actual physical retreat last year and I got a couple and they've been great to do some smalls on. Um, they were $3. So I'll show you what, what I've got in there for $3. It's, it's a bargain. So this one um, has some 32 count and 36 count linen, some 28 count and 32 count even weave and some 16 count Ada. And it's just a good selection of um, various colorways that she dyes. There's a few. If I can hold them all up at once. I think for three dollars it's it's really good value and they're probably just scraps that she would have had to throw away anyway. I'm not going to be able to hold them all up at once. Hmm. There we go so yeah really glad to pick one of those up that's um four five six yeah ten little pieces of fabric that come in handy for all sorts of things and it's also a way to um familiarize yourself with some of the the colors that she uses i don't know if that's a normal normally in her shop um but yeah have a have a look 
is on Etsy, Jay's X Stitch. Okay. Um, now tomorrow is the 14th of December and that means it's time to delve into this little bag of goodness, which is the Silks For You 12 Days of Christmas um, mystery bag. I don't know what you, I'm not sure what it's called. <laughs> um, but I was lucky enough to snaffle one of these up. I think it's the first time they've done it. So um, I might show, show what I get at a later date. Um, it was, it looks like I've broken into it. It was because it was sealed up these cute little stickers um, and that didn't fit in there so this is for, for they're all wrapped um, they're all nicely wrapped and they've got which day you pull them out so that's day seven Not sure what that is <laughs> um, but I've just poked it in there to keep it them all together um, but yeah looking forward to seeing what goodies come out of this purchases I found I can't remember how I found these to be honest but anyway I found them on the cruel goblin online store here in Australia and the first one I saw is not one that I've seen anyone stitching um, it's the scarlet letter spot motif embroidery I tried to look up information online and there really wasn't a whole lot oh, I'm not sure if that's in focus but it says circa 1640 and it's got those kind of almost grotesque animals. They're, they're kind of exaggerated, I guess. But as well as animals, um, you know, like mammals, there's also there's a snail, there's moths. Um... Reggie, what are you doing? Um, there's flowers. It's just really cool. Um, now this, it says, if you, the finished reproduction stitched over one thread in 10 stitch on 35 count linen will measure about nine by 13 inches. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it in 10 stitch or I'll just do it in cross stitch. Don't think that's showing too well, sorry. Um, anyway, I like that. Now... <laughs> Around about the same time, I also came across Long Dog Sampler's Beauty Spot and Sun Spot um, on the Long Dog Sampler's website. And I did, um, Beauty Spot fell into my cart. <laughs> so I have a PDF version of that, which I also like, and I'm not sure which one I'd start first. They're, they're similar-ish, similar style um, motifs on them. Um, but yeah, if has anyone stitched this? Let me know or, or this sort of style now because it's silly to buy one thing and pay postage I had to get something else to go with it um, so I got another scarlet letter piece and another one that I haven't really seen anyone stitch it's the hunting pocket so it's got one two three sections um, there's quite detailed instructions in there um, and what you can do you can finish that into a, if you stitch it this is also tiny they also recommend 35 count linen and a lot of it's over one i think so i'm not sure but it says um it what does it say it if you finish if you finish it up sort of the way it's it's meant to be rather than a hunting pocket it would be large enough for credit cards and change <laughs> um so i'm just really curious about that and this is intriguing too and the the um what is it a i guess it's a dog chasing a deer anyway so these two <laughs> different and fun so um one last 
last bit of hole. It's absolutely not stitching related at all, but I think I'm just about at the end. I am that auntie who insists on buying educational gifts for my niece and nephew. So they do get something to fun as well, but I always get them, I usually get them a book. And I don't know how well known this book is outside of Australia, um, but I've got my, my nephew um, this one, which I love, and I might have to get one for myself. It's the Illustrated Encyclopedia of Ugly Animals by Sammy Bailey. And she's just done a beautiful job illustrating the ugliest animals there are. Um, but it's also a bit like an encyclopedia, so I just find one. Let's see. There we go. The Australian ghost shark. So there's a big picture of it. And then there's just a bit of info about it. So I know my nephew will enjoy looking through that. He pretends to like animals, although he's a bit <laughs> scared of them. This is the back, it shows you some more of the, the ugly animals. And she's just come out with a, um, oh, I think it's Dangerous Animals, Illustrated Encyclopedia of Dangerous Animals. So I know there will be a few of you um, out there watching who will be interested in this book. I really recommend it. Okay. okay, last little bit. I have some stitchy kindness that was completely unexpected. Um, I have asked permission. So thank you, Debbie Wilson. I've already had words. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it and it would, I was just so chuffed. Um, so Deb and I are stitching um, the Joyful Diaries um, series together. Highly recommend. I will link her channel below if I can work out how to. <laughs> um, she has a beautiful Burmese cat too, an older boy, Darcy. And she likes seeing Reggie pop up um, all over the place. You can probably hear him eating right now. I received this in the, in the mail. I opened it up and firstly, I came across this fabric which is really neat. It's called Colours of Australia by Sew It All and it's opalescent. And I actually think that's going to be perfect for the Lindy Stitches Funky Menagerie Sow, which I have bought because, you know, it's right up my alley. So. Um, I think that they will look great. I need to do a floss toss, but um, I think that's going to work really well. Thank you so much, Deb. And the other thing, this just blew my mind. I couldn't believe it. She has made this beautiful little gift. If you've been watching my channel, you can see that she has matched Reggie's fur and his eye colour. He has amber eyes. Oh my gosh, he's just jumped up on the table because he's attracted to the, the bells on top. It is beautifully stitched. Come here. Here we go. <laughs> we can compare the two. So she got it just right. His eyes aren't showing because it's a bit dark. But he, I'm going to have to put this somewhere out of reach um, because, yeah, you can see he's <laughs> already obsessed. Anything that dangles or jangles, um, this will be going up somewhere higher, Deb, I promise. Thank you so much. It's beautiful. <laughs> now I'm just being mean to him. I just, I just couldn't believe it. Thank you so much. It's lovely. <laughs> Now he's showing his true colours. You can't, no, 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 no. It's okay, it's okay, it's safe, and I'm putting it away now. <laughs> anyway, there we go, it's all safe. He is um, staring at it though, he does not want to let it go. Anyway, <laughs> with that, I'm going to finish off. Um, I can I can assure you that there were no there was no stitching harmed in the course of this video. 
and we'll see you all again soon. See ya.